Hey guys, what's going on? Um, I just want to make a quick video. I got a few messages on Twitter and in the Discord and a couple other things about people who are talking about starting Bug Bounty in 2023, either as a New Year's resolution or just because now's their year or whatever it may be. Um, so I wanted to go over something that's just for getting started in Bug Bounty in 2023, what I think about it, how I would go about doing it, and some of the steps I would take. Also, I talk a little bit about goal setting at the end. It's kind of a personal thing for me. So stick around and do that if you're interested. I hope you guys enjoy. It should be a short one. I just made a really quick, obviously, templated PowerPoint. So everything's on the screen and can hopefully be a little bit easier and not just my face. So let's get started. So the first thing we have is the prereqs. Uh, I, if you notice, I did not put coding on there. I didn't put anything about a degree on there. I didn't put anything about uh, being a master of Ubuntu or Debian Linux or Kali or anything else. Um, really the, f the three main things that I think you need to have is the big one is curiosity. The second one is a, the deconstructive mentality, which what I mean by that is the interest of like, you see something put together in the final product and you wonder what it looks like in pieces, right? Like. What does each piece actually do that makes up the whole structure? When you see a web app or you see a mobile app, like what actually is a web view on a mobile app? Like what does it do? Why is it interesting? Um, that's the deconstructive mentality. And then again, with that deconstructive mentality is the endless curiosity of how this stuff can be deconstructed. So not just like taking someone's word for something of like, oh, when this comes apart, it looks like this really questioning things. So maybe the endless curiosity on that line, I meant for it to be different than the first line. It, it was supposed to be like, there's curiosity, but then there's like the endless curiosity of taking things apart. And maybe I should have put it as like a little bit of a different word, but it's kind of, you know, vo limited vocabulary. The next one and the third one would be common computer knowledge, right? Like if, if you're literally, it's your, you know, great grandpa or grandmother that's just sitting down and doesn't know their way around windows even or like linux or anything doesn't barely knows how to turn the computer on like you, we we do need that so it's kind of a joke it's kind of facetious but we're going to throw that in there because obviously you need to know your way around the computer otherwise it's just not going to work right so starting the journey i'm going to circle back to this later but there's so many places to actually work on stuff these that I put on the screen are the actual hands-on keyboard places to practice. We're going to talk later about books, YouTube, videos, podcasts, write-ups, all that kind of stuff. These are the things where you'll actually be able to go and work on stuff. Um, the top three have premium or paid options. Try Hack Me, Hack the Box, Pentester Lab, at least last time I checked have free like free premium versions and the premium paid version but they're very cheap and i've heard that they're all worth it i personally haven't done try hack me but i've done hack the box pen tester lab and then port swigger academy i've also done and it is totally free 100 percent and so is pone college pone college is actually put on by the university of arizona here in the united states and it's again is all free resources and they actually give you like really cool dojo belts as you complete stuff so you know, look into it. Again, the reason why I put et cetera is because there's over the wire, there's, you know, GitHub projects like juice shop and all that, like the list would literally just be screens and screens and screens, which is a good thing. The one thing I'm going to say when I say beware of scams, what I mean is when you're starting the journey, especially not so much the hands-on stuff, when you're looking for YouTube videos or stuff like that, obviously one of the big pop-ups will be courses and PDFs and eBooks and all these kind of stuff, I would vet those very, with much scrutiny. I would make sure they have a lot of reviews from solid people that they themselves have results in the bug bounty world. There's very few of these courses, these follow alongs, et cetera, that really give solid information. Um, a lot of it is going to be learning on your own. That's where the curiosity comes in. This isn't so much, I just haven't heard of that many people that watch a course on Udemy and then blow up. So I would avoid them if possible. There's plenty of free resources and plenty of like well-known named resources out there for you to actually practice on 
as well as well-known resources out there for content co to consume as well. The platforms, obviously HackerOne, BugCrowd, Integrity, yes, we hack. I think there's like Open Bug Bounty. There's a bunch of them again, et cetera, because now there's just getting to be so many to name. Those are all public ones. Private platforms also exist, such as Synac, um, that you actually have to get invited to or have like a little CTF tryout thing. For platforms, the reason why I put this in there is not necessarily to tell you what they are because you can go find them. And if you're interested in Bug Bounty in 2023, you probably know what these are. The reason why I put this on there is because when you look at the list, the first question in your mind may be like, well, which one do you go to? And the answer is whichever one you want. Go look at what other people think of platforms. Go look at what programs, you know, what scope and programs are in certain platforms. Go look at what payouts are, whatever floats your boat for a platform, go to the platform that has it. Right. If you really, really want to hack Fortnite, that's your whole thing. Is you just want to just crush Fortnite, then Epic Games' program is on Hacker One. At least last time I checked. So that would be the program for you, or the platform for you, right? And that's just based off your program. Where if you're looking for, you know, more European countries, I think that would probably be Integrity. If you're looking for like European uh, scope and that kind of thing. I believe that would be the way to go for that. But again, it's up to you. The private platforms, I mentioned them down low. They're an option as you go along. Uh, again, do your research, see if what they have interests you. Again, I know there's a lot of like Synac envoys out there, for example, that will talk about Synac. And you can chat with them about that. It's up to you. But for starting, I would pick a public platform based on any of the criteria that you like that interest you. Then when you get down to a platform, again, like I said, there's programs and each program will have scope. What I recommend when you're just starting is to pick one form of scope. Like don't be a web hacker one day and then see someone pop a huge mobile bug on Twitter. So all of a sudden you're a mobile hacker or, you know, reverse engineering the next week or you, you know, decide to pivot. Just pick one thing, especially when you're starting, pick one thing. Again, the thing that interests you the most or is, or is, you know, pays the most, if that's what interests you the most, fair enough. And go after that thing. If Even though there's not that many hardware targets in Bug Bounty, there are some. And if hardware is really your thing and that's really the direction you want to go, even if you're a total beginner at it, do it. Because you liking it will help you stick with it more than randomly jumping around to what may or may not have the most money. Like you may start a web because you love it and you'll see the little blips over here of, oh my God, web three million dollar bounties. Like go over, like let's go do that. Like. If you bounce around just because someone popped a huge bounty in a certain scope the other day and then you bounce, like, it doesn't get anywhere. The whole point is, like, to start wide and go narrow. And what I mean by that is try a little bit of everything maybe or look into a little bit of everything, see what sounds the most interesting, grab onto it, and drill down and become an expert in that thing. That's what will really, in my opinion, get you success, even if it is just classic web stuff. Like, web is still hip nowadays. Like, it doesn't have to be web three or crypto or smart contract hacking for you to be a, a cool hacker like you can just be a classic web dude or gal whatever you want but i would focus on what you like and then go from there but i would pick one thing and focus on that next this is my way of learning and every successful hacker i've ever talked to ever seen ever consumed content from has the same opinion on learning that the number one way to learn, especially for cybersecurity and especially for bug bounties, is to just take the leap and immerse yourself. That's why at the top it says hands on keyboard, right? You can read and watch YouTube videos and list, you know, do write-ups and whatever it may be, and that's good and that helps and that helps you find information on how to do the hands on keyboard. But once you've consumed the information on, oh, this is how to do the hands on keyboard, the next step is to actually take your hands and put them on the keyboard and just keep working on doing the thing. And even if you don't find it right away, that's how you get better at finding it. Now, the one thing I have bolded there on focus learning is actually something, going to give credit, that Z-Wink talks about a lot. If you haven't heard of him, go look him up on Twitter. He's a very good hacker on Bug Crowd. And one of the things he's mentioned a few times is focusing your learning. And what I mean by that is, especially with bug hunting, 
go to the bug crowd VRT or, you know, whatever it may be. I think all the platforms have their lists out there and go look at what vulnerabilities actually get you paid, what companies will pay you to find, and then pick from those vulnerabilities, stuff that you like, again, stuff that you wanna hack or like, and learn how to find them in the wild, in the current day, right? When you learn XSS, everyone has to start by injecting the script tag that says alert one, great. But what you the part that you wanna to get to is the modern XSS hacking. You wanna get into WAF bypass, you wanna get into like all the extreme things of fuzzing and behavior analysis and all that kind of stuff. You wanna catch up to 2023, right? Because throwing script tags around gets you very minimal success nowadays, but there's still plenty of people finding XSS, but it's just leveled up. And it's the same way in a lot of things. If you really like IDORs and just manually hunting all day long for idors that's great you find them they'll get you paid great how do i find them how are other people finding them how are they exploiting them in the wild and is there any way to you know level them up to even more crits right and there are many sources for this info write-ups are one of the biggest ones you want to know how people modern day are finding xss or modern day are finding ssrf or something like that go read the current write-ups of people who found SSRF and XSSS or go the, you know, if someone makes a YouTube of it or a POC or whatever it may be, go find the current ways people are actually doing it and read those or consume that content. Don't just take courses again, like scammy courses on finding XSS or scammy courses on, you know, immersive recon that will find you loads of subdomain takeovers go and see how other people are finding subdomain takeovers currently in the wild there's like even some of these topics have like legit research papers on them on like google scholar or something go read become an expert on the stuff that you have interest in and catch up to the current day because a lot of hacking started way back when you know, the internet was first a thing and kind of grew with the internet. And now it's something totally different than what it used to be. Cross-site scripting, again, to stick on the same example, is totally different now. It's the same vulnerability, but it's totally different, like hunting for it in the wild now than it was, you know, 20 years ago. Same thing with SSRF, like webhooks didn't really exist in 1990. Like, like microservices and webhooks and all this stuff, same thing with like APIs and this, like this is all and they grow and like now GraphQL is kind of blowing up. So if you're an API hacker, like you probably want to know GraphQL too. Like you probably want to know GraphQL for API hacking more than you need to know SOAP hacking. But at the same time, if you come against a SOAP API, it'd be nice to know that too. So it's, it, there's a lot of branch now, but you want to try and catch up to current 2023 and whatever topic you're interested in. And the best way to do that is to focus your learning on the vulns that you know you'll get paid for, that you know you wanna try and exploit in the wild, and then go finding the write-ups, YouTube videos, uh, blog posts, whatever it may be, Google Scholar articles, whatever it may be on that information. And then, hands on keyboard, consume the information and then use the information to actively do something. That's the step that a lot of people miss. Oh my gosh, I've read all these books, all these YouTube videos, and, and nothing's came of it. Great, hands on keyboard. That's the key, okay? The last really note I have is one thing I want to talk about is a note on goal setting because I know one of the ways a lot of people burn out of bug hunting, and if you're going to start bug hunting in 2023, it's always a risk, is setting goals and then not meeting them, and there's the like immense disappointment. So that's the first bullet is that it can be a huge motivator of like, I'm going to make X amount of dollars and it's going to be great. And then if you don't, even if let's say like, I'm going to make $500 this month, and in one month, you don't, like month number one, you don't make that $500, you're instantly disappointed with yourself because you didn't do it. Even though maybe next month was like a 10 grand a month, but you quit because you found $0 the first month, but you had a $500 goal. But if you had just like kept at it for like four months, you could have been making like three, four, five, 10 grand a month. Like you were like right there, right on the edge of your like, of your, you know, aha moment and really blowing up, but your goals actually demotivated you rather than motivating you. So I recommend working on creating systems instead of working on reaching milestones or goals. Systems, habits, like you can really call it either way. Like one of a system could be like, I'm going to hack 
for 20 hours a week, like hands on keyboard, I'm going to hack. And I'm going to spend five hours a week on reading write-ups and consuming write-ups. Or I'm going to consume, or I'm going to go find write-ups to read for one hour every morning when I wake up while I'm drinking my morning coffee. Like, great. And then 20 hours a week, I'm going to hands-on hack. And 10 of those hours are going to be training. And 10 of those are going to be on a live program of my choice. Like, that's creating a system. And if you're going to set goals, I recommend making the goals about hitting the systems. And then the milestones just kind of show up. That's just in my experience and from what I understand and others experience and not even just cybersecurity, but a lot of stuff in general, the milestones do happen to just show up when, when, how, why, like who really knows, but it's just a thing when you work on creating systems and or habits and then stick with them and you make your goals about sticking consistently to the systems, good things happen. So if you are gonna attempt bug bounties in 2023, I know you can do it and I think you'll kill it. And I would really love to see you guys setting up systems rather than like, I'm gonna make X amount of dollars this month or I'm gonna find this many crits this month or this many SSRFs. Instead, wow, I read 30 write-ups this month because I read one a day. Like you'll look back and be like, like you consumed that knowledge. And then if you also hacked for even you know five hours a week, you know, just a couple days a week, you hacked for an hour, like that all compounds and you're consistently improving. Five hours a week over all the weeks in a year is a lot more than 50 hours in one month that you ended up quitting, right? Just, just little consistent steps towards the goal. So that would be my thing on goal setting versus, you know, creating systems or habits, but that's up to you. That's all I really had. Um, if you want to hear something else, you want me to go more in depth on something, let me know, chat me up, Twitter, Discord, whatever. We can either make another video or, you know, we can talk one-on-one. -on -one. Let me know. Uh, the other thing is if you guys are going to attempt bug bounty hunting in 2023, I would love to A, work with you. If you want to collaborate, let's collaborate. And B, I want you to tag me and I want to hear about all your stuff. I am so into people bragging to me. I want to hear about all the bugs you guys are finding. I'm super hyped for you guys. If you guys even think you found a bug or you, oh, I almost found a bug, but it, it, it was really close, but it didn't quite work for X, Y, Z reason. I want to hear it. I want you guys to get after it. Let me know in either the Discord, Twitter, whatever. Um, I think you guys are going to kill it. But if you've stuck around this long, thanks. Otherwise, peace.